As we were heading into our second winter in Texas, we knew that we wanted to have a different way to heat the RV. So there were a couple of things that were really important that we have in the heater that we buy. I think we can safely say that at this point we are huge advocates for not only propane heat, but for this style of heater as well. Um, even for living in an RV, it just works so well. So as we were heading into our second winter in Texas, we knew that we wanted to have a different way to heat the RV. The RV furnace has never worked and we knew that when we bought this RV. RV furnaces are a little bit notorious for having issues and failing and we knew that that was going to be something that we would have to address at some point. But our first winter in Texas, we were in an RV park where all of our utilities were included. So it wasn't a big deal for us to heat with electric. Even though usually electric isn't the most efficient, common sense way to heat, we just went ahead and did it anyway because it was easy for us to do and we ended up heating with basically a giant space heater. And it did a really, really good job. But obviously we're in a different situation this winter and we most likely will be going forward. So we wanted to have a different way that would be a little bit more economical and a little bit more functional. And so we did try to fix the RV furnace. Do you see any of these wiring connections? I didn't do that. That's the shoddy work of an RV manufacturer. <laughs> and we replaced like the sail switch and a couple of other parts um, and we actually did get it to the point where it would kick on and blow warm but then something happened some kind of back feed and the motherboard got fried at that point you're looking at like thousands of dollars to repair it or replace it and because they're so prone to issues anyway we just decided to chuck it Stuart did a bunch of research and we ended up finding a propane heater. People mount them on walls and, and homes and use them in cabins, but we also saw that people were using them in RVs and really, really loving them a lot. And the particular brand that we ended up going with was Hearthright. So there are a bunch of different reasons why propane is better than electric. Um, and I'm gonna let Stuart get into like the finer points of that because he's the one that like researched all of this stuff. Propane is not the absolute best thing in the entire world to heat with, but given that we're in an RV, we have the easy choices of electricity and propane, which we already have the infrastructure for. Another option would have been like a, a diesel or gasoline parking heater. But propane was clearly the easiest option, and we had an open outlet for it now that we'd just taken out our RV furnace. So I did the research for it and found that like she said, the propane wall heaters don't use electricity at all. So that was a big plus for me because we don't have, I mean, we do have a solar system, but in the winter you don't get that much power from it. And that could be a pretty large draw on our electrical system. And then also her BTU, which is, I'll try not nerd out on you, but it's a, a, it's a way of measuring heat. Per BTU, propane ends up having a lower cost per heating value than electricity does. So if you take your price per kilowatt hour that you're paying for electricity and multiply it times 24, if you can buy a gallon of propane for less than 24 times that value, propane is going to be more efficient per BTU. So the fact that it's then cheaper for us, it's more efficient because we're not using electricity and it gives us you know a greater ability to heat off grid it just made sense there were a couple of things that were really important 
that we have in the heater that we buy um, because I have like a little buddy propane heater it's like a mr. buddy heater that I bought when I was in the Navy and I would take it with me on the boats during the winter time because our heaters on the boats never worked it works really well and last winter when we had the snowmageddon we actually did use it to heat in here and it did a fine job but the one biggest drawback for that heater is that it doesn't have a thermostat it basically has three settings off low or high and so if it's low and it's not gonna keeping up with the temperature then what you see is what you get and it's just gonna be chilly and there's nothing you can do about it or high and you're being roasted out of the place but you have to have it on high because otherwise it's gonna be too cold it's just not the best it's not as efficient and we really wanted to make sure that it had a thermostat so that we could set it to the temperature that we wanted and so that the heater would like kick off whenever it reached that temperature and the hearth right heater we have is a 20,000 BTU propane heater with a thermostat the thermostat makes it to where it cuts off and it has just a little pilot light so anytime we're completely not using it and it's warm outside we can turn it off and it won't use any propane because it won't have the pilot light on but it stays lit on its own and it turns the burner on and off if it gets too cold or too hot and we can I can narrow it in within staying within two or three degrees one of the biggest questions that we've gotten about this heater is well what are you guys gonna do it's propane and you're basically gonna kill yourselves so maybe you could jump in and talk a little bit about like why this heater is ventless and why you don't have to worry about like being killed by propane gas right okay so for one um, RVs breathe quite a bit and whether you want to or not there's going to be air coming in and air going out mm -hmm. so that gives you some leeway also on venting um, another thing is if you had it really cranked up in a completely like airtight room you would absolutely burn up all your oxygen but the fact that the rv breathes makes it a whole lot safer and then another point of it too is that it heats it up so hot that it's going to not put off i'm not exactly sure the chemical Thing of how it does it but it's not going to create a whole bunch of carbon dioxide mm -hmm. um, what it's going to do is it's going to vent off moisture and so that's something we've noticed mm -hmm. but I mean it's it's definitely a thousand percent safe mm -hmm. we've had it for months yeah it is very very safe it's a great option to go with it's worked well for us once we figured out the kinks but it definitely does like burn off moisture which is one reason why we would have condensation on the windows when it gets cold anyway just because it's going to be warmer in here than it is outside in single pane glass but the propane definitely contributes to that too so our little dehumidifier has been putting in the work um, but we've had that dehumidifier for almost two years now and it's worked really really well at keeping the humidity levels in the rv low keeping the windows clear um, we just have to keep it cranked up high enough, which is something that I realized probably a couple of days ago when I woke up and the windows were really fogged over. We just had to turn up the level on the dehumidifier. So if you don't have a dehumidifier for your RV, I'll link the one that we have down below. Um, but there are many options out there and you really should consider it because humidity is like a bad thing for an RV. Anyway, that's a totally different sidebar. We were able to basically just run an extension hose from the pre-existing um, furnace outlet that had been there originally for our, our furnace or for the propane line. So we basically just connected a hose to that with a um, valve so that we can shut off the supply of propane during the off season. And then that feeds out from the little cubby that we created and connects directly to the RV. There's a little bit more involved, a little, a few more steps, and we had a little bit of uh, drama figuring out exactly how to get everything connected. But we got it all figured out. It's going to work really well. And it'll be nice because during the warmer months when we don't have to have the heater going, we can disconnect everything, tuck the excess hose away back into the cubby, and pack the heater away into our cargo trailer so it won't be there taking up space. Because that is one thing that I maybe don't love about the heater is the fact that it is kind of big and I do find myself moving it around. But if it's a toss up between having to move something around or freezing to death, obviously it's a no-brainer and it's really not the end of the world it's not a big deal so there were a couple of kinks that we did have to work out when we got this heater um, 
we learned very quickly that the heater is a little bit sensitive to pressure and it was doing this really annoying thing where inexplicably for seemingly no reason at all it would just shut itself off and it was doing this sometimes like in the middle of the night so we were waking up to like a 50 degree RV which is not a ton of fun and we were kind of confused by that because the, fr the fridge and the stove were working just fine but the heater was not. This propane heater we learned is very sensitive to the amount of pressure coming out of your propane tanks. Mm -hmm. And so for one we found out that our propane regulator that we currently had for the RV it was going out and it was on the fritz mm -hmm. and it was being very inconsistent um, and we weren't able to tune it. So we bought a new one of those and then it also has a little adjustment screw on it so that we can lower or raise the pressure. And what we learned is that the heater didn't like high pressure. Dialing back the pressure made it put out more propane in less pressure or less air with it mm -hmm. and made it not turn off as much. So we just had to make a point whenever it starts to do that to go out and switch the tanks over and then we're off to the races yeah. again. Our regulator actually it's designed to do one tank and then flip over and do the other but it won't flip over and do the other until it's completely empty mm -hmm. and that area where there's maybe 10, 15, 20 percent left in the tank I think somewhere around 10 percent left in the tank um, it starts getting funky with this heater. I mean, it's it's also the largest draw on the propane system. So there's a little bit of a learning curve with everything, and it took us probably start to finish about two and a half to three months to like figure out everything, get the right heater, get everything set up the way that we wanted, and then figure out how to make it run the like most optimally. But once we've gotten through all that, it's been absolutely wonderful, and. I absolutely love the heat that this heater gives off. There's two different styles of propane heater. There's a blue flame heater and then there's a radiant one. Mm -hmm. a radiant one, think of as it think of it as you are literally sitting in front of something that is hot and it's giving off heat. Like a wood stove. Like a wood stove. And then the second type is a blue flame, which is as it sounds, a, a blue flame, a very hot flame. And that heats the air instead of the objects. So it makes the whole RV on the inside feel warm instead of all the objects, but then the air still being chilly. Mm -hmm. It's so cozy. I absolutely love it. One other huge thing that I want to make sure I say, because I know so many people have like small children or pets, um, the heater itself, like the, the frame of it, and even like the front of it, doesn't get really, really hot. Even when it's going like full, pla full blast, I can like put my hands on the side of it, move it around, do whatever I need to do. It's not gonna like burn the dickens out of me like a wood stove would or like other styles of heater. It's really not that bad. And I don't think that that should be a reason to not consider getting one. I think we can safely say that at this point we are huge advocates for not only propane heat but for this style of heater as well. Um, even for living in an RV it just works so well and I really can't think of anything aside from maybe the size that I don't love about it. One final thing I want to say, um, I do want to give a shout out to the people at Hearthright because they are awesome, awesome people. Their customer service is top notch. We had some issues getting the right heater because we got sent a natural gas heater first and then there were issues with the supply chain and, and a huge delay in us being able to get the right heater and from start to finish the customer service was just stellar the people were so friendly so helpful they really like went out of their way to make sure that we had the information that we needed and helped us make sure that we were going to be set up for success and that goes a really long way for us um, towards the kind of company that we want to support and the business that we want to support so just want to put that out there they were amazing yeah i would rather spend more money with a good company than less with mm -hmm. a shitty one mm -hmm. and they were definitely a good company but funny enough this heater would have been 425 bucks it's not cheap and just because you call them and have a good conversation they're like oh let, let's give you a sales code it ended up being 305. that's our hearth right heater and that's how we're staying warm for the winter and how we plan to continue to stay warm for many many winters to come we love our hearth right heater and yeah, if you have any questions, be sure to let us know down in the comments and I will answer them. Texas is so mercurial. Yesterday and today, the weather was really mild and warm. We didn't even have to turn on the heater last night. I was sitting outside doing homework, the dogs were playing, and then within the span of like 15 minutes, the wind changed, started blowing from the north, and it's starting to get really chilly. So I think it's gonna be cold tonight, which matches with the forecast that it was going to be. Um, so I'm going to go inside and start getting everything closed up so that it doesn't get really, really cold in there.